What's up guys, this is Michael from Blocks of Fury, and today I have a tutorial for you on the Assembly Line mod. This mod's part of the Volts Pack, which is just released um, just a few weeks ago in the Technic Launcher. Um, this mod's gotten a lot of press from people like the Yogg's cast, and I've tried it out and it seems pretty awesome. The one thing I saw that was lacking is the documentation. There's a severe lack of um, tutorials and um, the wiki is really incomplete, so I thought that I would go ahead and do the tutorial on this because I haven't seen anybody on YouTube give it an in-depth tutorial on the assembly line mod, and this is one of the most interesting things in the pack because the lack of pipes, you need a way to transport items, and this is the pretty much the only way I think. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and start. So the first thing that we have is the manipulator. Actually, the um, the just regular assembly line parts. These are the conveyor belts, and you make them by having three steel ingots at the top, two pieces of wood, and then a motor. You make the motor by copper wires, um, and steel ingots all around one iron ingot. Then finally, the copper wires are just made of copper, and I uh, yeah copper and leather. So there's three copper and six leather. So pretty simple um, for those. All you need to do is put some wires going up to them. Um, there's a battery box in here with an infinite battery. Obviously that's not something you can get in it if you don't have creative mode. But um, if you want me to make another tutorial on basic power, how to actually get it legitimately, then I will do that. So you just hook them up to a power source and there you go, it starts going. Now you can change the direction of these using the wrench. Um, simply right click on them with the wrench and, oh whoops, standing on them. Right click them on them with the wrench and they change directions, just like that. Also if you shift right click on them, then they will go up and then down and then back. So that can be really helpful, I've used one of those right there. And that's pretty much it, very very simple. Now the second thing is the manipulator. The manipulator is a little more complicated. Um, to pull things out, all you need to do is you place down a manipulator. By the way, you make that by doing this. You simply get a dispenser, which is a regular vanilla Minecraft item. Just cobblestone with a bow and a piece of redstone. And then you need a basic circuit. The basic circuit is just redstone, a bronze plate, which is for bronze. And finally, um, the copper wires and redstone, which I just showed you before how to make. Or you can make it out of a steel plate. Steel or copper, or steel or bronze, your choice. I think bronze is less expensive, so I'd recommend that one. Next, I'll show you how to make this, or how to use it, rather. So you hook it up to power, just like these, but this one actually to pull things out. And you can set it to pull things out by doing the wrench. Um, you can flip the entire thing around by right clicking it, just and it's going to pull from where the back is. See the back is right here, so it's going to pull from this. So, and then you get to choose if it's input or output by holding down shift and right clicking the actual conveyor belt part. So you'll see that this is switching which direction the arrow is facing. So I just want it facing out to be an output to pull out from the chest, and I want it facing in if I wanted to pump into the chest. But the thing is, when you're pulling out, you need a redstone signal. Now what I've done is I've hooked up a very basic redstone clock down there. That inverts a signal. Um, it's really, really simple. If you're watching this, you probably have a basic knowledge of redstone. You can set up a redstone clock. All you need to do is have just a flashing redstone source by here. Um, pretty simple. Um, if you want me to make a tutorial on actually how to activate these, I mean... If you don't know how to make redstone clocks, then I will just comment down below. So that that's pretty simple. Now the other way to use these, besides pumping out, is pumping into something. Now I have two examples of this. Oh, actually, um, here's pumping in. When you're pumping into something, you don't need the redstone. So no need for a clock. You just need to power it like any other rail, and just orient that into the chest, and then it'll go right in. Now, the next um, use is you can actually pump in and out of things of that, that aren't chests. For instance, this furnace. So what's going to happen is a um, 
ironing it or in an iron ore block I'll show you um, what's gonna happen an iron ore block is gonna come up here and it's gonna go in here this is just powered it doesn't need a redstone signal or anything and then that will um, immediately drop the item the manipulator will put it right in to the top slot here I'll take out this coal put it in my coal box so that's immediately gonna drop it into the top box and then if you um, use an input that's below a furnace it'll put it down here where the coal or the fuel is supposed to go and finally if you pump out of a furnace on the side you will pump out the output which is right here so I'll show you all this in motion in a second but um, oh, and you, you notice I've got the um, that one's an output, so I've got the redstone clock hooked up to it. So next order of business is the detector. This seems like um, as of right now, it's very impractical. It can't really detect differences between blocks. It just detects if there's a block where that green thing is pointing. Um, it can't like say, oh, that's iron ore. I'll send it here. Um, it and sticky pistons can't even move your conveyor belts so a redstone signal can't really do that much but I did figure out one purpose for it which is when a ore block comes down here then it's gonna activate this when that's activated it's also gonna activate this output from the chest now that's gonna output one coal every time that there's a block that comes in front of here so a block comes in front of here this detects it sends out a red redstone pulse this redstone pole is going to hit here once, and it's going to pull one block of coal out from here, and that block of coal is going to go in here. This is going to give the block coming here some fuel, and it will smelt, and then it will come out right here. So that's one use of, of the fur detector. So I'm sure there are other uses for the detector, but I just can't really think of any right now. Um, seems like a somewhat impractical block. Um, next is the, what is this thing called? Um, it is the rejector. So the rejector works off these things called imprints. What it does is if it detects there's going to be a block coming down here, um, in this case iron ore, then it's going to stop that block and it's going to push it this way. So pretty simple. How you do this is you take, okay, I need to get over there somehow. I have not, let's see. Now these these conveyor belts do push your character, so you got to keep that in um, in mind. So what you can do with the imprinter is I haven't figured out how the crafting thing works because it's pretty complicated. I I don't know. I put like 30 minutes into trying to figure it out. I really couldn't. It didn't seem to work all that. Oh, never mind. I I did figure it out, but it's impractical because what you can do is you can put a crafted item right here, and then you put your ingredients for that right here. And then it'll make the thing out. It, it'll it'll just make it out of these ingredients, and it'll make it right here. Um, but it doesn't really matter because um, I mean you can just do that in a regular crafting bench. It really doesn't. I don't know. I don't see how it really helps all that much because you can just do that regularly. So. Um, that is the imprinter. All you do is you take an imprint, put it in here, and then you take an iron ore block, and then all of a sudden it gives you this, an imprint of iron ore. And then you simply right click on that machine with your imprint, and it becomes an imprint machine for that certain item. So pretty, oh geez, this is what I'm talking about with the glitches. I'm going to go into creative so I can hopefully get out of this. Um, yeah, this is that was one of the glitches. This is a very glitchy system. Um, it does not work all that well. I didn't explain that in printer very well. I don't really know how to. Um, but if you want me to give more in depth on it, then I will. But essentially, just put in a block, put in an imprint, get an imprint of the block, and then put it in there, and it will reject it into there. So, next, we've got the detector. Oh, I already did that. That was the thing I'm standing on right now. I'll, I'll go over the crates. Okay, so crates are pretty cool. You put them down like that, and let's see. I have some stone in my inventory. I'll get that out. So, 
take your thing of stone and you right click on it if you right click on the upper third like I did then your stone all of it everything from inventory is gonna go immediately into there this can store something like 2,000 blocks so it gives infinite storage of one material now that's the thing it can only hold one material so and then you can right click on it again shift right click and it'll give you everything again if you hit it on the top upper third um, if you do it in the bottom right click there it's only gonna put in one stack put in the other stack and then click on the bottom again shift right click and it'll give me one stack back another stack back so crates are really cool in addition you can um, insert all your stuff oh shoot and I'm in creative whoops so put another crate down um, right click right there got all my stone in and then what you can do is you can pick these up you just right click with your um, wrench and then it's really cool you can um, you see this crate that I've got in my inventory that is yeah right here it's got 128 stone now the more you're carrying around the more it's gonna slow you down as you can tell I'm walking slower but it is totally worth it because you can carry around thousands of items in your inventory. So it's a really cool item, um, a cool concept. I like it. And those can be um, shipped on the conveyor belts so you can have massive amounts of storage and compression on your conveyor belt. Now I think the last thing I have to explain is the arm bot and the encoder. These are incredibly glitchy. That's what caused my um, flipping around and the conveyor belts and I will go over them now they're really impractical there's really no reason to use them but apparently the creator is going to do a lot of work on them and then they'll be really really cool so I'll go over a basic demonstration so what I have here is I've got these things programmed I've got two because they're a little bit slow um, so they can't let any go by so you just program these with the machine called the um, what is this thing called the encoder and you get one of these things and um, you just put commands in it so to rotate to first of all you want to grab the item now it's going to grab an item if it comes below it's just going to type in grab and then you're going to press enter it's going to make a grab thing and then I'm going to want it to rotate 180 degrees so I just type in rotate twice okay now I've got grab rotate rotate and then I want to drop the item and then I want to um, return to the original position. Finally, I want to repeat this. So I'm just going to say repeat. There we go. And then you're going to take this. Whoops. Um, you're going to take it. And now you have your little disk. All you need to do is right click on the arm bot and it installs the code. So that's um, pretty simple. But the thing is, it's glitchy. There's no real reason to do it because you could just use another conveyor belt. Um, also, you make the, I don't think I showed any of these things, the rejector, um, you make it with a piston, copper wire, steel plate, and redstone. I already showed you how to make the steel, oh, steel plates are just four steel. And then imprinter is four steel, ink sack, sticky piston, three wood, crates, are just three or four steel surrounded by sticks pretty nice and then the encoder is seven steel with an advanced circuit in the middle that's made with a diamond basic circuits which I showed and redstone so not too hard to make the arm bots also really inexpensive three steel um, two steel plates and an advanced circuit so I guess it's one diamond but not that bad of a price so, I'm going to show you all this in action now. This is pretty cool. I really like the way the look, the look of the arm bots, but um, to tell the truth, there is no reason to have them as of right now. Eventually, they're going to be able to differentiate between items, shoot lasers, do sorts of weird stuff. So, here we go. I'm going to put 64. Actually, let's see. Just to show you that this thing works, I'm going to put in, let's see, I'll put in half a stack of stone. I do this. A stack of stone, stack of dirt, and a stack of cobble. Okay. So I'm going to put all this right in here. 
So let's see. I'll put in first I'll go for stone. And you can see it's already pumping out. And let's see, I'll put that right there. So as you can see, it's popping the items out. They are not iron ore. So they they just go straight past the rejector and right down into that chest. Now the iron ore is going to come up here and every time it passes one more coal is being popped in. As you can see they're going up on a one to one ratio and the imprinter is just pushing them right out. So then the iron comes out and the iron bot comes around. It makes a cool noise and drops it and then that's going to be dropped and that iron bot grabs it. Now I put two here because it's a little too slow for one. Um, the the stealing gets come slightly faster than the arm bot can do its job. So as you can see the cobbles coming down. I mean obviously I could just have it go straight there, save machinery, save time, but I think those things look awesome. And this is a tutorial on how to do it. So I figured I might as well Yeah, so getting all your stuff into that chest. Obviously you can make incredibly advanced sorting mechanisms with this that would look really awesome. I love this mod, um, but it's it's definitely a work in progress. So it, it's going to get lots better. And um, uh, one more idea is you can use this as a people mover. Um, you just stand on it and it automatically moves you from one place to the other. Um, I'm not pressing any controls and it automatically just moves you. So you can use this for escalators even. Um, if you just had like all these like tilted you could move it as an use it as an elevator so I think that pretty much concludes this episode um it's a pretty pretty basic mod it's not actually that complicated there are not many parts in it um thanks so much for watching blockheads and goodbye